the first point that we will talk about is the definition of value and obviously this is value in the context of equity valuation here are a few terms you need to learn intrinsic value this is the true or real value of an asset or security given a hypothetically complete understanding of the assets investment characteristics why do we say hypothetically complete understanding we say this because we can never have a complete understanding of an assets characteristics therefore we can never be 100 percent sure about the true or the real intrinsic value of an asset but nevertheless we can try to collect as much information as possible and come up with a value that would be a perceived value we are going to denote intrinsic value with the symbol v the current market price of an asset is given by p for simplicity we'll assume that we are talking about a publicly traded stock so the current market price p is easily observable in an efficient market the price in the market will be equal to the value so this would be a completely efficient market but all markets are not necessarily efficient and all assets are not necessarily priced efficiently so there might be some mispricing that mispricing is equal to the true intrinsic value of an asset minus the market price then as i said we cannot be 100 percent sure about v so what we then talk about is perceived mispricing this is the difference between the estimated intrinsic value and the market price so let us denote the estimated intrinsic value as v e so v e minus p this is the perceived mispricing and if we do a little bit of algebra so we say that this is equal to the same thing plus v minus v so algebraically we are covered and then this expression can be divided into two components v minus p and v e minus v what is this telling us this is telling us that the perceived mispricing has two components one is the actual mispricing which we cannot be completely sure about and the other is the difference between the value that we are estimating and the true value if you are an active investor and you are trying to identify underpriced securities then for you to be successful in the long run two things need to happen the first is that v and p need to be different in the sense that obviously in a completely efficient market the value will be the same as price so the assumption is that you are operating in a market that is not efficient there you can make abnormal returns so there needs to be a difference between v and p the other is that this term the difference between your estimated value and the true intrinsic value should be as low as possible ideally if this is close to zero and the assets are underpriced which would mean that p is relatively low and the true intrinsic value is relatively high then you as an active manager will make money so that is stated like this in the curriculum for active investing to be successful your estimates must be different from consensus estimates and must be correct in this context consensus estimates would represent the market price because market price is generally based on what the majority is expecting so that would be consensus estimates next major point is the distinction between going concern value and liquidation value you have seen this at level one when you value a security you make an assumption that this particular company is going to go on forever even accounting numbers are based on going concern value the opposite of going concern value would be liquidation value liquidation value is where you say that I'm going to liquidate the assets. I'm going to then settle the liabilities. And what remains is the liquidation value. You as an analyst need to know which method needs to be used in what scenario. If you are evaluating distressed securities, 
So these are companies that are maybe likely to be liquidated. Then does it make sense to use the going concern value or liquidation value? Obviously, it makes sense to use the liquidation value. Going concern value is what you would use when you are coming up with the value of a regular company that is expected to go on for a long time. The next important distinction is between fair market value and investment value. Fair market value is the price that one party will pay another party, where both parties are willing and neither party is being forced into the transaction. So that is called a fair market value and one generally assumes that when stocks or other investments are trading, they are trading at fair market value. Investment value is the value of a particular security to a particular investor. As an example, if you are a large pharma company and you want to buy a small pharma company where you believe that there are considerable synergies when you absorb this particular company. Then we might say that if you are the investor, you are the big pharma company, your investment value might be higher than what others are willing to pay. So in that case, note that the investment value is the value that you as a strategic buyer are placing on this investment. And it might not necessarily be the same as what other people are willing to pay for this same investment. Also, sometimes you might have real estate investments where the value can differ based on the tax rates of different investors. So when we consider the characteristics of the investor and then come up with value of a particular asset or investment, then that is referred to as the investment value.